Hello and welcome back to Serpent Sunday. As always, I'm your host, Morgan. So the other day I was in the hellscape that is the Facebook group for my community that I live in. And you know, that statement's only true part of the time. It's not always a hellscape, just like 70% of the time. But I saw a post that a woman had made saying, hey guys, aren't snakes supposed to be in hibernation right now? What the hell, I just saw a baby rattlesnake on my property. And of course you got the stereotypical, I hope you killed it comments, but that's not what we're here to talk about because I responded with, oh, well, snakes don't technically hibernate, but we're in a very mild Southern California climate where they don't even go into a period of dormancy in the same capacity that you would see in a more Northern area or a higher elevation ecosystem. And my comment, of course, got mostly ignored, got a couple of likes, whatever, because of course these suburban wives are only interested in talking about how we they needed to kill it, but not the point. Today we're gonna talk about snake hibernation. First things first, snake hibernation is not technically called hibernation. It's called brumation. And brumation is basically just a period of low activity, usually over winter. And this period we have a kind of stop of growth and the metabolic processes slow down. And like the respiration rate, heart rate, all that fun stuff drops. And it may be more or less intense depending on where the animal is. So again, in the more moderate climates like where I live, you don't see a very intense brumation where you would see it say in the high Sierras where pretty much you're gonna go into a very deep dormancy to survive the very cold winter. And so what are the things that trigger brumation? So this question is kind of still being researched and it's not completely understood. It's obvious that temperature will trigger brumation. So that drop in temperature signals to the animal that it's time to start scaling back on those metabolic processes, find a nice cozy den to snuggle up in and wait out the cold weather until a more pleasing time period to exist happens. It's also thought that the photo period, so the hours of daylight available during the day reduces, the snake will also be signaled to lower their activity. And then it's possible that humidity and the barometric pressure will also have some sort of effect on the hormonal cues and the circadian rhythms that snakes rely on to trigger their brumation periods. But we see in captive, um, captive collections that brumation may or may not always be triggered, like in colubrids, especially like uh, king snakes, which I now realize you cannot see, but my king snake tank is right here. You can hear me tapping on it. Um, king snakes would normally brumate a very general pattern for colubrids, like my king snake Xena, is to brumate and then have the reproduction. Breeders will simulate that in their own facilities, but my king snake, I don't put into brumation at all. I don't breed her. I don't see a need to, and she can live a healthy life without it if it were necessary for her own well-being. Of course I would brumate her, but she doesn't hibernate. She essentially lives as if it's always summer. And so do my other species. And then brumation is something that kind of varies among snake species as well. So how exactly is it different from hibernation? So hibernation is kind of specific to mammals. So one thing that makes it very distinct is that mammals live off of fat stores primarily when they hibernate. 
and mammals also require relatively more oxygen during their hibernation period than snakes do when they're in their brumation. And for mammals, it's generally going to be the entire season or a longer set period. And once they come out of hibernation, they don't really go back into it. Now, there are exceptions. There are exceptions to every rule. This is just a general trend. And in reptiles, they're going to live off of glycogen stores. Glycogen is a type of sugar. Now, yeah, they do have fat stores they can live off of too, but it's primarily the glycogen stores that they're going to live off during prime, during brumation. And brumation specifically may play a role in the triggering of reproductive cycles in some species, specifically colubrids like king snakes, garter snakes are very well known for this, um, coming out of their massive hibernation dens and basically all those snakes are very much looking for love when they come out of that long nap. But brumation also may kind of have a little bit more activity in it than a mammalian hibernation where you'll see these animals breaking dormancy during milder weather to move out and bask. They'll seek out water to drink because they do still need water during that brumation period um, to keep themselves properly hydrated, but they won't go far from their den. They will still return to the same den. And so speaking of dens, what exactly makes a good brumation den? Well, you'll see like some species brumating in these mass dens underground, like the garter snakes. Some species will return year after year to the same den, like timber rattlesnakes. And some species share dens with different species. So black racers are known to share dens with timber rattlesnakes. Um, and you'll also see these species will still like eat and things during brumation, whereas like mammals in hibernation, they're just living off their fat stores till spring returns. And a big thing here is that the dens can pretty much be anything from an old rodent burrow to a crack in a rock face to somebody's basement if they live in the right area. And they're not very picky, except of course for those timber rattlesnakes that will go back every year to the same den. Because I guess, a little sentimental, but that's just me anthropomorphizing. It's not entirely clear why they keep returning to the same den. It's just a thing they do. But You'll see in milder climates, like in Southern California, there'll be more winter snake activity and periods where they emerge from dens. So yeah, they'll still go into a type of hibernation. Their activity will still slow down when it gets cooler, but that period will be much shorter. And as long as you're seeing the warm temperatures, you're still gonna see snake activity. If it's warm out, snakes are going to be out because brumation is not the same as hibernation. And you can see these differences in populations of the same species that just happen to exist in slightly different climates. So like the gopher snakes and king snakes down where I am are going to be a little more active at different times of the year than the king snakes and gopher snakes higher up on the mountains, just a two hour drive away from where I'm currently sitting. But the an important thing for anyone, especially if you live in a climate that gets very cold in the winter, if you think you found a cold snake out in the wild, don't try to artificially warm it. Again, do not try to artificially warm it up. That sudden temperature change can actually shock the snake's system and result in death. The things that you're going to want to ask yourself are, did I accidentally bring the snake out of its den? Was it already out basking? Um, is it being sluggish? Is it acting disoriented? And if you've answered yes to any of these, 
please contact your local wildlife re rehabilitators for advice. And if need be, they can send someone out to collect and properly help the animal. Um, just because you're in winter and you see a snake out doesn't necessarily mean it's in distress. Again, brumation is not the same as hibernation. They're not necessarily going to sleep all winter. If it is a little bit warmer and milder, they may come out to bask, seek out water, whatever. And if you're in an area like Southern California where it stays pretty mild throughout the year, the period where the snake's brumate may only be a few weeks long anyway. So for those of you in my area or an area similar to here wondering why you're seeing snakes out and about in the fall, that's because it's still hot. So I hope that you've learned a little bit about what snakes do in the winter, a little bit of the differences between brumation and hibernation. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, afternoon, evening, night, what have you. I'm losing the light here. This is the third video we filmed in a row and I'm going to go ahead and sign off and I will see you all in the next one. Thank you again for watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell if you would like to see more. And if you'd like to follow me on any of my other social medias, the links are down in the description below. Don't forget to check out thereptilegoth.com for all of my articles and blog posts. If you found any value in this video and you would like to help support the channel, please check out my Patreon page. That link is also in the description down below. And a special thanks goes out to my Diamond Dragon patron, Diane V. What you're doing is really helping me fund a dream here. I will see you guys all in the next one.